How can you listen to music without blocking your ears or annoying those around you? Watch on to find out. Hey, how's it going? You're watching Iron Will, your place to find tips, tricks, and experience in triathlon, multi-sport, and endurance events and training. Typical hearing and audio involves compression waves which travel through the air, hit your ear, go through your inner ear, hit your cochlea, and that is how you sense audio. What if there was a way that we could bypass the ear canal and send the vibrations directly to the cochlea, leaving the ear canal open so that we can still hear our surroundings that way is bone conduction. In a nutshell, bone conduction bypasses the need to send compression waves through the ear canal. It sends it instead through the cranial or skull bones, whether that's through the jaw or through the skull itself, and that sends it directly to the inner ear or cochlea, allowing us to hear those sounds in addition to everything that's going through the ear canal. As the name bone conduction suggests, it conducts audio through your bones. Bone conduction devices such as the Trex range, they sit in front of your ear, so it leaves the ear itself open. That means that you can listen to audio in situations where you need to have your peripheral audio still active. So you still need to be able to hear things around you, such as maybe when at work, when doing shopping or walking out across the roads, that sort of thing, or maybe even when exercising, such as running, cycling, or in the gym. Quite often, I will be using these devices, whether it's this one, whether it's the sunglasses, whether it's my helmet that also does bone conduction, and I'll be using them when running or cycling outdoors, since I can still hear people approaching, I can hear runners coming up behind me, or if I'm cycling into work on my commute, I can hear cars all around me. And it makes the process of listening to audio while doing other things so much safer than traditional headphones which block the ear canal and as such block other audio from the area around you from getting to your inner ear and from you actually hearing that. I tend to liken bone conduction to having audio on in your car. Same as when you're in the, your car and you're driving on the road, you could have the radio on or you could have audio playing. You are still aware for instance, maybe if a police car or an ambulance is coming up behind you, you can still hear that. Same thing with this. You can still hear the cars around you. This also means that you could use this device or other bone conduction devices when you are going for, say, a social run or a social bike ride. This means, yeah, you can listen to audio while having a chat to those around you. Though, of course, yes, it is absolutely safest to not have audio playing when you are doing a run or a bike ride or anything in general. It is safest to keep the audio out of the equation completely, even when you're driving. So if you're really concerned about safety or if these are distracting you a bit too much, then don't use it. Same thing when driving. If the audio on your radio distracts you while driving, then turn it off. In quite a lot of races, such as the Ironman events, you're not even allowed to have audio with you. So you can't have anything that's technology that will distract you from your race or distract others in any way. That means, no, you cannot be listening to audio during your event. Uh, for instance, in the Ironman World Championships that are happening this weekend, you will not see anyone with headphones, regardless of whether they're bone conduction or not. And while it can be nice to listen to audio while you're doing an extended long run or an extended long bike ride, you do have to kind of get used to the idea of not having audio. Also, there's the argument that a lot of people make that you do actually tend to go a little bit faster when you're not listening to audio, because then you can focus a lot more on the sound of your own body, sound of how your feet are landing on the ground, the sound of other people around you approaching, and just actually focus on yourself. And there are plenty of other uses for bone conduction. For instance, people with a damaged ear canal or maybe they've got damaged hearing in some way. There are a lot of bone conduction devices that are used as hearing aids. Companies that create these sorts of hearing aids include Cochlea or Oticon. Also, have you ever gone underwater and found that your hearing is all muffled? The reason for that is that air is a decent conductor for compression waves, so audio waves, but underwater it is a terrible conductor for audio waves. And so therefore, if you want to listen to audio while underwater, you're gonna to have to either create an airtight seal around your ears so that you can use regular headphones, or 
you can use bone conduction headphones specifically made for underwater use. Because they don't use air as their conduction medium, because they use your actual bone, that means that the water doesn't make a difference. You can still use them. But of course you do need to have a specific device that is created for underwater. If you were to use, say, the Aftershocks range of devices, they're not rated for underwater. They will break. They will stop working. There are a lot of bone conduction devices created for underwater use. Some are for sort of casual social use, which you can wear while doing laps in the pool. They are a little bulky, but technology will catch up and they will get better and better. But there also is a lot of technology that has been used by scuba divers for years where they will talk to each other through bone conduction devices. That way they can talk to each other while underwater and coordinate with each other. So how does bone conduction actually work? Typically bone conduction uses the bones within the head, either usually the front of the ear, sometimes the back of the ear, sometimes the jaw and the original device is actually plugged onto the front of the head and send those vibrations directly to your inner ear, or the cochlea. For instance, the Trex Aftershocks titanium and air range of devices sits in front of the ear, so it sits here. But then from the same company group, you've got the Trex OptiShocks, which are sort of a beta test program they'll be coming out formally later on, and they sit behind your ear. The sensation of bone conduction kind of feels like the audio is coming from within the room, but nobody else can hear it. And of course the whole purpose of this is so that you can transmit audio bypassing the ear canal, allowing that to hear other surrounding sounds, or bypass the ear canal if it is blocked. And of course this will mean that the audio out of these headphones, it won't be as good as dedicated in-ear headphones. Just keep that in mind. They are a bone conduction technology, so they are limited in the audio that they can deliver. But of course the offside of this is that they are much safer to use since you can hear your surroundings. So I think that that safety factor is completely worth the slight reduction in audio quality. The quality and the volume that comes out of bone conduction devices does depend on the amount of sounds that are around you. So if there's something really loud around you, it will slightly drown out what you are hearing through the bone conduction devices. And with any bone conduction device, if you do want to increase the audio quality, all you have to do is block your ears. And that way you can hear the entire spectrum and you're not actually offset by the audio that you're hearing from your surroundings. One easy and cheap way to do this is to just get a pair of earplugs. Pop them in whenever you need to have really good audio quality. Maybe you're on a plane or something like that. You use bone conduction much more than you think. Every time you talk, you are using bone conduction. The way that you actually hear your voice is through vibrations within the skull, not so much from your voice going out and bouncing off something and going back into your ear. Because of that, the voice that you hear inside your head when you are talking is usually a lot deeper than what other people will hear. So if you were to record audio of yourself or maybe even film a YouTube video of yourself, if you were to go back and watch that, you will hear yourself at a much higher pitch than you heard yourself when you were creating that. The main devices I have been using over the last couple of years to listen to audio have been bone conduction devices. And the main range that I've been using have been the Trex range. So I originally had the Trex Aftershocks Titanium, which I bought a couple of years ago in 2017. I used those for about one and a half years. And then I upgraded to the Trex Aftershocks Air partially because of the slightly better audio quality, slightly better battery life, slightly lighter design, and also because they're red, red goes faster. Also since then I also signed up to a kind of a beta release program for the Trex OptiShocks brand of bone conduction. So this is a pair of sunglasses that has bone conduction pads at the back. These sit, as I said before, behind your ear so they're actually quite discreet. A lot of people won't even notice that you are listening to audio. Whereas, say, if you used the Trex Aftershocks uh, range, these sit in front of your ear. So yes, it's somewhat obvious that you're listening to something. And I have found these to be really durable. I've worn these uh, sweated into them. I've worn them while going for running. Uh, where it started bucketing down with rain, so I was running for a good maybe hour or two in bucketing down rain, 
listening to audio through my bone conduction devices and they still lasted without any problems at all. They've also lasted in dirty gym bags, around sweaty clothes, all that sort of thing. So they are a really good quality device. For these devices that I have shown here, I will leave a link in the description box below to where you could find them. Check out my previous video where I review the OptiShox range of bone conduction devices. I'll leave a link up here. If you want swim, bike, run and exercise content every week from here in Australia, then hit that like and subscribe button and I will see you in the next one. Cheerio.